Hey, Wild Souls, this is Elle and Carrie, your hosts of Seasonal Reflections. Whether you're a seasoned practitioner or a curious soul taking your first steps on this path, Seasonal Reflections is your compass to navigate the ever turning wheel of life. And if you're ready to explore the intersection of science and spirituality, then we invite you to listen to our podcast and become part of our community. We're creating a space where myths come to life and your connection with nature deepens. Hey, Wild Souls, I'm Elle. And I'm Carrie. Last month, we discussed traditional and modern ways to celebrate Yule, full moon in Cancer and Mercury retrograde. I hope everyone had a safe and easy travels over the holiday season. We talked about how to consciously feed the local wildlife over the winter. And I want to mention, I recently bought bird seed, and because of our crap last week, I looked at the ingredients real quick, and I could not believe some of the stuff that is included in bird feed seed like artificial cherry why just why so be sure to check those labels Um, and the details for that are on our instagram page at seasonal underscore reflections carrie how was your holiday season i survived just kidding sort of (laughs) as you know i hosted my eighth annual hot cocoa party with all of my close goddesses seemed like everyone had a great time uh, despite it downpouring outside did it down for? I didn't even notice. Yeah. We were having such a good time. <laughs> oh, that's good. <laughs> so following that, my mom had surgery. By the way, she's still doing well. Um, then I hosted a solstice dinner, a Christmas Eve dinner with my kids and two friends, and finally Christmas dinner with in which I cooked and brought dinner over to my mom's house. It was a lot of hosting. <laughs> It was pretty nice having dinner with some of my family. I was grateful that my brother and sister-in-law were open to dinner, despite being Jehovah Witnesses. Of course, we didn't really do anything in the way of like celebrating Christmas with them. We didn't really need to. We just had dinner, which we all have to eat anyways. I surprisingly enjoyed hosting the events, and I felt emotionally well during them. Is that the right way of putting it? Like, you know, this time of year is hard for me and hard for most people. Although my brother passed away um, in December 26 years ago, I still to this day think about him all the time, especially during this time. Uh, Memories, the what ifs, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm sure some of our listeners might feel the same way. Then to add on other difficult past events happening during the fall and winter season in my life, I just don't want to celebrate anymore. I, I didn't really want to for a while. Um, I've really worked on what makes me happy and how I can readjust the way I celebrate to make it more enjoyable, all while reminding myself that my kids have their own favorite things. And I kind of have to pull on my big curl pants and do some of those things because I love them and I want them to be able to celebrate their way and and have good childhood memories. And then uh, near the end of the month, When my kids went with their dad, I took the time to rest and then went dancing all night on New Year's Eve because that's my favorite thing to do. Um, And it was a nice balance this year. So how was your holiday? Uh, You know, it was uh, it was mid. (laughs) Can you tell I have a teenager? Uh, Seriously, though, it was it was good. It was quiet and reflective. I had a lot of fun at the things that you hosted. Um, one of them imposed by myself. So thank you for hosting <laughs> Salsa Center. To be fair, I cooked two lasagnas. Right. Um, and then our daughters got married. <laughs> pretend not married in the pretend. front yard. They're nine. Um, <laughs> and they forced us all out, all of the adults and kids. <laughs> and apparently there was a dress code that yes. we were not informed of beforehand. It was a thing. And froze our butts off outside. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so yeah, my holiday season was just the, the right balance of quiet and reflective with alone time and friend time. It was good. Good. All right. So let's talk about today's episode. Uh, there's not a Sabbath this month, so we will do a little astrology sky watch, including a deep dive into the new moon in Capricorn and the Leo full moon. We'll talk about how to keep our living spaces organized and magical why we started the podcast, and discuss the ongoing legacy of Martin Luther King Jr. 
Carrie, I love your Torian ability to construct a narrative. Would you mind getting us started by sharing a glimpse of your own witchy journey and maybe a little about what inspired you to start this podcast? Sure. I mean, you know that my conversations aren't really little by any means, <laughs> but, but they'll make you feel things, hopefully. Um, had quite a few reasons for wanting to do this podcast with Elle. You and I have been friends since 2016 when our little girls were biddies. After getting to know each other and trust was built, as in true Torian Scor Scorpio fashion, uh, we just clicked and have been pretty close ever since. After my divorce, uh, you would have me over to your house every Tuesday for tea. I would have you over or you just showed up and never left? <laughs> uh, uh, hey, man, the door is open. I just walked through. I'm kidding. <laughs> so uh, we got together on Tea Tuesdays and so we could drink and talk about what life is now, who we are, and all things spiritual before a carpool started. You always had tasty treats, and you knew how to lure a Torian into your abode. Um, some days felt heavier than others, and we would just sit on your front porch, basking in the sun, not saying much, until you inevitably took out the ukulele, or I started singing some random song or made-up jingle. It felt nice to not have expectations other than being in each other's company and drinking tea. It was a very comforting space when I didn't know what was next for me. I liked that you were and are spiritual and enjoyed, hopefully still enjoy talking to me about it. Um, because in the past, I used to be interested in astrology and nature's rhythms. But for some reason, life took me on a different path. I don't think it was widely accepted at the time and it had a chock full of stigma attached to it. So I never had anyone I could really share my thoughts with. Um, I remember at the age of five where I would go into the woods in my neighborhood and do what is referred to now, I guess, as forest bathing. I had no idea what it was called back then, but I enjoyed being alone sometimes, or I should say often. Um, the world felt very loud and I didn't understand how people could treat others poorly. So I needed a break again. I was like five, which is weird to me. It seems so young, but. Anyways, I found this open clearing in the woods where the ground was solid rock with lichen and moss everywhere. I would lie there feeling the cold rock beneath me and the warmth sun upon my body from above. The texture of the moss and lichen against my fingertips felt fluffy and fragile and in other places rough. The wind would move through the spruce trees and if I was really quiet and stayed there a while, animals would skitter by. I fell in love with nature from that first moment. I've been thinking about that a lot lately, trying to find moments to do that on a regular basis. In fact, y'all, Elle, our friend and I, would be the ones at the park with our shoes off, tray of snacks, laughing while on the ground while our kids played on the playground. Well, as time passed, I went to college again. We still hung out, or still hang out, but we added monthly spiritual events at my house. I was, and I'm still grateful for their friendship and the other wonderful friends that helped me get through all that I went through and still sometimes go through. Long story long, <laughs> I wanted to do this podcast so that I could share my journey with others who might relate in some way and hopefully be inspired to awaken themselves. I'd like to give option to those souls that may want to adjust their path and customize it in the way that they want to add humor and empathy to the struggles of life, to question social norms we do not connect with and embrace our own unique journey to accept all versions of ourselves. I love that. And I'm not surprised you were so connected to the forest at five. You are the most grounded person I know. <laughs> Uh, my journey was rooted, and I'm taking a little bit of a liberty here, but I want to say also my, my journey was rooted in escapism and coping mechanisms. Um, I've always been drawn to all things occult and witchy, but was made to feel terribly bad about that due to conservative religious upbringing. But in my heart, I've felt that being connected to nature and seeing her patterns always felt right. And I have distinct memories also 
as a very young child, leaving the toxic house and finding refuge in the arms of a maple tree or watching ladybugs crawl on a plant or marvel at clouds. When I was 13, we lived in a, an apartment quad and upstairs lived a trio of amazing humans in their early 20s. And they had a copy of the only astrology book you'll ever need. And I was hooked the minute I knew we had more than just a sun sign. It felt so right to me. Um, but I wasn't allowed to have a copy. Somehow it was okay to spend countless hours with 20-year-olds that I barely knew <laughs> reading it at their house and to have my own copy. Um, so that's what I did. I went there every day after school and drew up everyone's charts and learned about moon signs and transits. I think the real reason I fell in love with astrology was that it finally gave me an energetic pattern to all of the sensory input I was feeling when I interacted with people, and it did wonders for my social anxiety. So I followed this path for many years, and at some point I went full feral. That is a story for another day. Um, then I had my kids and settled into domestic life, and about a decade later is when I met Carrie. And felt the pool to kind of rewild myself, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So when Carrie was navigating her divorce, I was navigating big feelings of a disconnect and feeling plugged into the matrix of capitalism. So T Tuesdays was the year uh, Jabin and I decided to put our belongings in storage, buy an RV, and travel the country with our kids the time they were five and nine. During that trip, I reconnected with nature's rhythms and really found what was important to me. And a shifting of values and focus took things back to what truly mattered to me. And one of those things was plants and my relationship with them and sharing that with others. So I feel like this creative project helps me share my passion with people and being a Scorpio, that is very important to me. It's always funny to me when I reflect on times in my life when I needed someone or a group of people and they just like happened to appear in my life. Um, some were the, the best friends for a short time. And even though we might not be, I guess, what's considered active friends now, I still love our time together and wish them the best. Others like you, Elle, turn into family. Um, I think we need each other longer, maybe lifelong platonic romance of sorts. <laughs> It's more than a friendship, damn it. It needs a better name. Maybe witch wives, empresses of the crow coven, <laughs> sister, hold on, sisterhood of the traveling staff. I like that one. <laughs> um, so I, I hope you wild souls have at least one person like that in your life. I also hope this gives you a deeper sense of why we are pursuing the creation and continuance of this podcast. Uh, moving onward to our astrological forecast, what is coming up for us in the month of January, Elle? Well, lots of stuff. There are loads of energetic shifts happening this month. And one of, I think, the most interesting shift is from Capricorn energy to Aquarius energy. They used to be ruled by the same planet, Saturn, until the discovery of Uranus in 1781, when I originally learned this, it blew my mind because like, if you know a Capricorn and an Aquarius, they are usually very different people. Like when you look a little deeper though, there's a clear continuity there. So we'll look at that, the planet shifts and what the moon is up to. We'll start with the new moon in Capricorn on the 11th. <clears throat> so what is the new moon anyways? It's when the moon is positioned between the earth and the sun. And its illuminated side is facing away from us, making it appear as if there is no moon in the sky. It marks the beginning of the lunar cycle, symbolizing new beginnings, fresh starts, and opportunities for growth. It happens once a month, and it asks us to create realistic goals for that said month. So what does it mean when we say a sign is in a new moon? During a new moon, the qualities of the sign in alignment with the moon are heightened, influencing the cosmic energy available to us. So the new moon is a good time to start new things, plant seeds, make those intentions, and get some extra sleep to give us the energy needed to accomplish what we set out to do. So the new moon in Capricorn is a time to plant seeds and focus up on our role in society. 
Capricorn is an earth sign ruled by Saturn and is often associated with traits such as discipline, responsibility, ambition, and practicality. Capricorns usually have a very goal-oriented nature. Once again, Capricorn is an earth sign, but whereas Taurus is how we experience the world through our senses, and Virgo is the physical body, Capricorn is our place in society and our things. It's represented by the devil in the tarot deck, and traditionally the devil stands prominent on the card with two naked individuals in chains, but the chains are loose. Like they have an option to be there, but would rather stay chained to materialism, so to speak. And we all have these tendencies, but the darkness of January asks us to reach inward and look at our darkness. How do we keep our inner devil, so to speak, in check? Um, And one way to do that is by planning and making goals. And those are big themes for the new moon in Capricorn. Uh, One is future security. So taking time to make sensible decisions, uh, maturity, retirement, old age. Uh, Kronos was the Greek equivalent of Saturn, which was Father Time. So we're all given a finite amount of it. And Saturn asks us, how are we planning for our end of life? And are those plans realistic or idealistic? Um, And depending on your age, this can look like adding a little more to your retirement fund every month or starting a savings account. Or if you're young, just daydreaming about what it will look like or what you think it will look like when you get old, what your relationship with aging looks like. Um, Saturn asks us, how we're handling our responsibility. Um, How are you adulting? Are you keeping your commitments? Um, How's your self-discipline, your public image? Are you reaching your goals in a pragmatic way? One of the things that I've learned about recently is called SMART goals. And the S is for specific, the M is for measurable, A is for achievable, and R is for relevant, and T is the time-based. Um, I love my smart goals. Actually, right? I learned about that in high school and it, I love them. I think they're a great way to do that. Yeah. Because then you have a roadmap to get to where you're going. Mm-hmm. If you just have this, like where you are and where you want to go, but no way to get there, it's going to be hard to get there without an outline. Yeah. Specific sub goals and yes. stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so Another thing to look for is your management skills. Are you following protocol? Are you delegating responsibilities that you can? Authority figures is another big theme. Fathers, bosses, your tradition, your reputation, uh, releasing control tendencies, lack of joy, sternness, fear of new approaches, pessimism, inflexibility, and self-justification. Do the ends justify the means? Um, Or can you be more flexible within things and find a solution that'll work for everyone? One of the pitfalls with the Saturn kind of authority thing is it's like, well, things aren't going the way that I think they should. So I'll just take charge. And um, that rarely goes well. (laughs) So a practical way to connect with Capricorn energy is in practice is to perform home magic. So as much as it, if you think about Capricorn, it is your position in society. The opposite of Capricorn is cancer, and cancer is our home. And if our home is solid, then our image and how we present ourselves in the world is going to be a reflection of that. So during the holiday season, there can be a lot of energy going in and out of the home via guests, gifts, or just vibes that we've picked up being places. Um, So I recommend talking to your house or living space. Um, You don't have to have elaborate rituals, although you can if you want to. Um, I know a lot of people like to like raise wards or do smoke cleansing and cleansing your thresholds. And that can feel productive. And those things are important if there's a real need. Um, But for general house protection, I like to just establish a relationship with my house or what home is to you, whether you rent a room or live with roommates or live in a temporary situation and ask it periodically um, what or if it needs anything. Um, Even if you live in a car, like you can kind of just get a vibe of where you are and what that space needs. Um, I also have a little ceramic home guardian that lives outside. Uh, It's a little box. Mm -hmm. And when I come in and out of my house, I 
give it gifts or I'll give it a little pet or I'll tell it thank you. Um, and I give it offerings like, you know, as I feel the need to. And I say hello and goodbye to my house. And I also have like a name for my house. Uh, we have a general name for the house and a nickname. And I asked my house and it told me its name. Um, but you can do this with any space. And it's just a really good way to establish an energetic vibe of a place uh, without having to, to do a whole lot of work. And I'm all about easy. Mm -hmm. I never knew you named your house. Well, I did, and the house named itself. I'm like, and just told you, I I name my cars, or maybe they speak to me. I'm not sure, but that's kind of a cool thing. <laughs> I I often, without even trying, like I don't think anything of it. Sometimes I'm like, bye, house. You're so lovely. Yeah, <laughs> it just feels just, really natural, like, right? Just, like, maybe it's my way of just being grateful for what I have. I'm just like, cool, thank you, <laughs> right? <clears throat> um, and that is very much a Capricorn thing too. Is like your status having a, a place to, to live, which is a big deal. It, it's our security, right? Um, but if you feel like you need to do more house cleansing, other than just saying hello and goodbye to your house, uh, I did put together a house cleansing solution uh, with like different essential oils and citrus fruits. And you can check that out on our Instagram page. Cool. So to recap, We've delved into the energies of the new moon in Capricorn, emphasizing the significance of planting seeds and focusing on our role in society. Capricorn is an earth sign, right? Ruled by Saturn, embodies traits like discipline, responsibility, and practicality. This sign encourages us to set both short-term and long-term goals, taking practical steps to manifest them through action. Capricorn representing our place in society is akin to the devil in the tarot deck. This symbolism prompts us to explore our darker tendencies and evaluate how we keep our inner devil, so to speak, in check. The loose chains on the devil card to break free from materialism, urging us to introspect during the darkness of January. So let's turn our attention back to L and explore what is happening in the astrological cosmos. L, with the new moon themes in Capricorn in mind, what additional insights or events are influencing us at this time? Anything noteworthy that we should be attuned to as we navigate this period of introspection and planning for the future? Uh, yes. Additionally, uh, Mercury on the 15th and Venus on the 24th, who I lovingly refer to as the sun's entourage. Uh, they are never far away from the sun. They both move into Capricorn as well, grounding our thoughts and communication, which is Mercury, and our feelings about relationships and how we interact with others, Venus in the practical earthy Capricorn energy and out of the lofty philosophical realms of Sagittarius. So your thoughts and ideas about feelings and relationships and how you're communicating are migrating from just that thoughts and ideas to practical applications. Um, and then the sun moves into Aquarius on the 21st, shifting from society's authority structure to our own inner authority. And that's how I look at the transition that I was talking about before between Capricorn and Aquarius. The authority and society aspects are still there, but Aquarius sees and honors everyone as individuals to create a collective whole, whereas Capricorn looks at the whole of society first and asks us to find our place. So Aquarius gives you permission to reinvent yourself. Let your freak flag fly. It is the true seeker of the Zodiac, this fixed air sign asks us, what do we need to liberate ourselves from? And it's okay if nobody else understands, as long as we know that we're being true to ourselves. Remember, this is the sister sign of Leo, whereas Leo is the fixed campfire that everyone gathers around. Aquarius is like the eccentric free thinker, and that is okay being different from everyone else, but wants to connect the community through truth rather than themselves. So self-acceptance is the main thread between the two. Um, then on Saturday, the 27th, Uranus moves directly into Taurus. Be mindful of sudden unexpected events, Uranus. And with Taurus involved, I'm thinking how you're handling your money or romantic relationships, but this is an outer planet. Um, so it's going to 
energetically affect the collective energy process more than a personal one. Um, and this kind of gets into the weeds, but if you have any Uranus aspects, like major ones in your chart, you might want to keep an eye on that for people who are more into astrology because Uranus moving directly into Taurus can shift stuff up a little bit just out of the blue. It's like lightning striking. It's not necessarily like a good or a bad energy. It just is an unexpected energy. Yeah, it is. It is unexpected. Aquarius and Uranus, they have to do with lightning, right? Uh, when Uranus was discovered, there was a lot of things going on with electricity and lightning and um, inventions happening really quickly. So it's kind of just like, whoa, out of nowhere, this thing is happening and you can't predict where lightning is going to strike. Mm, okay. um, and then, you know, Torian stuff, money, relationships, our physical body. So <laughs> you put those things the together, <laughs> the senses. Um, so it's just something to be mindful of. But like I said, it is an outer planet. So it's not as noticeable on small scale things. It could be like a larger scale thing. Okay, cool. Um, now with these celestial rhythms echoing our cosmic dance, let's turn the attention to the upcoming full moon in Leo on the 25th. So again, what what is a full moon anyway, right? It's The moon is directly opposite the sun. Its face is fully illuminated as seen from Earth, right? And this marks the midpoint of the lunar cycle and is associated with heightened energies and emotions. It's often a time of accumulation, illumination, and the expression of what has been building up during the waxing phase or since the new moon of the lunar cycle. It's a good time to check in with your new moon goals. Full moon heightens the qualities of Leo, right? So it heightens it with an emotional and illuminating nature. Leo is a fire sign ruled by the sun. It's associated with traits such as creativity, self-expression, leadership, and vibrant theatrical personality. <laughs> All of my kids are Leo moons, by the way. All three of them. So I feel the vibrant theatrical energy daily. <laughs> Leo moon asks, what is my role in the community? Since Leo energy is about self-expression and authenticity, it is continuing the same Capricorn moon intentions, manifestations, and specific goals. Influenced by the fact that the moon is a time for reflection, um, illumination, and culmination, it's asking you to sit with your plan, envision it, dream about it, see the progress, and tweak anything if necessary. Explore your creative outlets that you haven't tapped into before. Have fun with it. Showcase your talents. Celebrate that you've been taking the next steps to being on the path of your choosing. And assert yourself with courage and conviction. I would go further to ask, what hinders you from accomplishing these goals? How can you release it? Sometimes that means an emotional toll to sit with or work through, but it can also be doing those menial tasks to get them out of the way so they don't hinder your plan. This can also tie back to cleaning up your spaces inside your mind or your physical space that we've mentioned before. Additionally, Leo is known for its generous and warm-hearted nature too. Leo encourages acts of kindness and generosity, fostering positive connections with others. It could be a great time to find a way to, again, contribute to the community while staying true to oneself. Time to put those decorations away is also another thing you can do. Wash or how about delegate those <laughs> dishes and heaps of laundry? Put on some good music to energize you and get that shit done. Return those gifts if you don't want them. And buy yourself the tools you need to accomplish what you want to have in your life. As you express this, love your true self. The more people will have to get used to it or they can just get out of the way. Leo is a passionate and romantic sign, I suppose. You, can, you may want to focus on the matters of the heart, emphasizing the importance of love, passion, and expressing affection. This right before the upcoming Valentine's Day may be asking you how you wish to celebrate. Did you make those reservations, buy those flowers, or how do you want to receive love? How does your partner want to receive love? And how can that be expressed? Plan for romantic love, self-love, 
friendship love, family love, or all of the above. Make sure to check out our upcoming Valentine's Day podcast on the language of flowers and how Valentine's Day doesn't need to be commercialized um, or just for romantic love. Let's reframe what it means to us. Time to tap into our inner child, check in, and maybe do something that will make your little self happy. (laughs) Tap into your creative side. As I mentioned before, whether it's art, music, writing, or any other forms of self-expression, simply being mindful can go a long way for your personal growth journey. Let's take a moment to ask yourself some shadow questions that are related to this full moon in Leo. Do you know what to do when the spotlight is on you? Or do you freeze up? Do you have a fear of criticism or an inability to accept criticism? An important lesson of this energy is to accept feedback and use it for improvement. Nobody likes a prideful lion. Its strength resides in the pride as a collective. I'm going to put one more amendment. Whatever. <laughs> um, I want to know as a shadow question, how you receive a compliment. Cause I think that's just as important as how you receive and respond to criticism. I just say thanks <laughs> and walk away and don't believe it. <laughs> because I feel that was when I first started learning astrology, I would always know a leo i would give them a compliment and they would just they would if they vibed with it they would receive it with all of themselves like you can physically see it happening it's like they take the energy and just draw it in their body and they're like yes thank you i received that so that is a question is it my capricorn moon that's like (laughs) i can handle and take all the criticism to improve myself but don't you compliment me. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> so I just want to throw that out there um, before we, when we move on. Um, if, if you can accept criticism and you're good with that, but you can't take a compliment, you might want to look at that. Just saying. Adding right. to the list. One major theme of the Capricorn is longevity and society as a whole. And whenever someone has a long career in Hollywood, I always look up their birth sign. And more often than not, it's the Capricorns. Think Betty White. As far as social justice goes, uh, another legend comes to mind that was also Capricorn is Martin Luther King Jr. He was a Capricorn with the big vision and the tenacity. He had a Taurus moon to see it through. Another placement I noticed immediately in his chart was Mercury. Mercury is how we think and how we speak and it being in Aquarius is a marker of a rebellious nature, which really nods to his idealistic, humanitarian, open-minded way of rallying people together for a common cause. Most, if not all of you know about Martin Luther King Jr. Every state in the U.S. but 10 has a boulevard named after him. He's one of many civil rights activists and his speech made it across to every TV in the nation as well as globally. He was not only a civil rights leader, but a prolific author. He wrote several books, including Stride Toward Freedom and Why We Can't Wait, which provided insights into the struggle for civil rights. His influence wasn't just confined to the U.S. His bold insights and courageous soul inspired movements globally, leaving an indelible mark on the global fight against injustice. He did not do it alone, but with many community members, activists, and government officials. He was the voice that people heard. Mercury and Aquarius. (laughs) He shared his message and the message of others with the same mission. So why are we bringing him up? Well, on the third Monday of January, we celebrate him, his work. Likewise, it's considered a day of service for our community. Elle and I think he fits well in the transits of this month, and here's why. His commitment to justice, equality, and spiritual values aligns with the discipline and purposeful energy of Capricorn, urging us to build a foundation rooted in principles that uplift not just ourselves, but the entire community. And just like the full moon and Leo calls for bold self-expression, 
Martin Luther King Jr.'s message encourages us to express our values and beliefs with courage and passion. One aspect often overlooked is his commitment to nonviolence. He drew inspiration from Mahatma Gandhi's philosophy of nonviolent resistance, a powerful approach that became a part of the cornerstone of the civil rights movement. With all of the current global and political unrest this year's U.S. presidential election, we should reflect on the message of Martin Luther King Jr. and other important activists of that time, which we wish we could talk about, but for the sake of time, we will focus just on him. Um, so let us draw from their wisdom and relate it to your own path. We invite you, our listeners, our wild souls, to reflect on your own journey. <clears throat> Express your authentic selves and contribute to positive change in yourself and in your communities. One of my favorite authors, Gwendolyn Brooks, a 20th century African-American poet and author, simply once wrote, what am I to do with all of this life? Ellen, I encourage you to ask yourself the same thing as you create your life, Wild Souls. We hope you've enjoyed this deep dive into the astrological energies of Capricorn and Leo, as well as the inspiring legacy of Martin Luther King Jr. Mm -hmm. Looking ahead, we have more intriguing episodes coming up. For February, we will have two episodes, not one, but two. One delving into the Sabbath in bulk, Elle's favorite Sabbath. And another about reframing Valentine's Day. It's not just for lovers, but about self-love, love of friendships, and family. And that brings us to the end of another soul-soothing journey with Seasonal Reflections. And if you enjoyed today's episode, don't forget to show us some love. Hit that like button, subscribe to our podcast for more enriching content, and join the Seasonal Reflections community on Instagram at Seasonal Reflections. Looking to infuse your days with the perfect seasonal sounds? Find our curated playlists on Spotify by searching Seasonal Reflections. From vibrant Beltane melodies to the cozy tunes of Yule, we've got the soundtrack to accompany every moment. Your support means the world to us. Until next time, fellow nature lovers and cosmic dreamers. Stay rooted, stay curious, and most importantly, stay wild. Stay wild.